Good evening, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Terror Radio Podcast. If this is your first time joining me, then welcome. This is a podcast dedicated in bringing you the best of horror and thriller, old-time radio broadcast, as well as original stories. I'm your host, Keith, a.k.a. The Radio Show Nerd. And because I received such positive responses from my last episode, which featured the cult classic War of the Worlds, I decided to entitle tonight's episode, Give Me More Orson. (laughs) I'm sure you all could understand what I mean by that. (laughs) So, without further ado, this is Terra Radio. The radio series highlighted tonight is Suspense. And we are going to delve into the adaptation of the popular science fiction novel, Donovan's Brain, which was written by Kurt Sinemek and published in 1942. This adaptation stars the master of radio, of old time radio, if you will, in my opinion, the great Orson Welles. Now, this was a two-part series. Part one was first broadcasted on May 18th, 1944. Part two was broadcasted on May 25th, 1944. In 1982, an LP release of the 1944 radio version won a Grammy for Best Spoken Word album, which is very impressive. So, you all know the drill. Sit back, turn down the lights, and let's listen to Donovan's Brain. Roma Wines presents Suspense. Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud. Your health, senor. Roma Wines host the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the man in black, here to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, we bring you a star, Mr. Orson Welles. This will be the first of two consecutive performances by Mr. Wells, in which he will appear as the protagonist of Kurt Sjodmat's novel, Donovan's Brain. The producer of Suspense and its sponsors, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, feel that this story is so unusual that it merits more than our usual time. So in somewhat of a departure from established radio formulas, we will bring you the story of Donovan's Brain in two parts. Before we take you to the scene of our drama, let's take a little journey of a different kind. We'll let a bottle of Roma wine serve as Aladdin's lamp. I touch the label, and presto, we're all transported to that capital of gaiety, Havana, Cuba. And now we find ourselves in the charming Pan American Club. At a table nearby, an American has just voiced his delight at the uncommon beauty of the scene. Then his Cuban companion responds, You in America also have much that is uncommon to boast of. Such is this marvelous tasting wine we're enjoying this minute. To enjoy uncommon fine quality, Cuba imports this wine from your own distant California. It is your superb Roma wine. Now just realize what it means when other countries import Roma wine from such great distances. Such international esteem must mean that Roma wines are truly magnificent in quality. And then consider this. You here in America need pay no high import duty, no expensive shipping charges. For these fine Roma wines come from Roma's own wineries in the heart of the rich California wine grape district. Because so many Americans do realize this good fortune, Roma wines are America's largest selling wine. So why deny yourself this taste delight? Try an inexpensive bottle of tangy, appetizing Roma sherry, or the hearty Roma burgundy, or any of the marvelously enjoyable Roma wines. But remember, these days your favorite dealer may be temporarily out of the type you prefer. Then please try again. 
Ask for R-O-M-A, Roma Wine. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now with part one of Donovan's Brain, and with the performance of Orson Welles as Dr. Patrick Corey, we again hope to keep you in... Suspense! As I sit now outside my laboratory door writing under the heading Experiment 87, this final entry in my casebook, I know that these are the last words I shall ever write upon this earth. I neither ask nor expect forgiveness now or hereafter. But for those who seek some explanation, I refer them simply to this casebook. Let them read it carefully from its first entry on that ill-starred day, July the 13th. July 13th. Today I bought a small Capuchin monkey from an organ grinder. The animal trembled with fear when I took it into my laboratory, and when I tried to pet it, it bit me. I had to make it trust me completely. Fear causes an excess secretion of adrenaline, resulting in an abnormal condition of the bloodstream which would throw off my observation, so I fed it, and finally the creature voluntarily crept up into my arms, uttering little whimpers of contempt. When it laid its head against my shoulder, I stabbed it with a surgical lancet. It died instantly. What do you think of it? Well, it, it's pretty amazing, all right. See what I've done, don't you? I, I think so. You think so, but Lord, don't you know? Well, after all that, I'm only a second year medical student. Well, what if I was a second year student? Who is it? It's me, Janice. Come in, darling. Patrick, Dr. Schwartz is here to see you. Oh, come on in, doctor. You know our son David, of course. Yes, of course. How are you, my boy? Fine, thanks, doctor. Well, Patrick, hard as it is usual, uh-huh. I see. Patrick, you didn't eat the lunch I sent in to you. Well, what is it this time, Patrick? A brain. What? A brain, a brain, a monkey's brain. Oh. What about the brain, Patrick? I've been trying to see how long I can keep the tissue alive. Oh, is that it in that jar? Oh, there's considerably more to it than just a jar, though. Want to see how it works? Is it? Still alive? In a way, yes. It's a fairly simple device, actually, Doctor. Variation on uh, Corel's mechanical heart. The brain lies in the bath of blood serum. The rubber arteries are fixed to the vertebral and internal carotid arteries of the brain. The blood substance is forced through the cycle of Willis to feed the tissue. Over here, I've installed a small rotary pump that forces the blood circulation. You see? But how do you know it's alive? It's very easy to determine. The brain, when functioning, gives off infinitesimal electrical impulses. They can be measured. As a matter of fact, I've hooked the encephalograph up to a small amplifying system. The brain impulses can actually be heard. Here, I'll turn it on. See? Now, quite effective, isn't it? Yes, it's effective. And it's... It's wrong, Patrick. Terribly wrong. I it's tried wrong. to tell him, Dr. Schwartz. In heaven's name, what's wrong with it? Oh, Patrick, you and your mechanistic philosophy, trying to reduce life to a mere matter of chemicals and test tubes. The origin of life is from a higher domain than that, Patrick. And you're profaning. Nonsense. You can't stop the progress of science. Every discovery of whatever kind is a step forward. If I can prove that the brain can perform certain functions outside the body... Who knows where we may be able to go from there. Oh, Patrick, how, how do you know that thing in there doesn't feel pain? How do you know it isn't writhing in agony? The brain tissue itself is insensitive, you know that? That's a feeling look. I'll switch on the encephalograph. See? There. Notice the faintness of the amplified alpha rays. Notice the comparatively slow rate of pulsation now. Notice what happens when I tap on the glass jar. See? Uh, it feels. It thinks. I wouldn't go so far as to say that, but it certainly shows marked reaction to an external stimulus. I wouldn't have believed it possible. <laughs> the trouble with you, Shrout, is that you don't really believe in science. Uh, have it your own way, Patrick. That's when you can manufacture love and sympathy and kindness in a test tube. I'll be back. You leaving over? Yes. Patrick, hmm? do me a favor, Patrick. Shut off the pump and let that poor thing in there die. Let it die? Huh. If it were within my power to grant that little brain would live forever. I'm utterly exhausted from lack of sleep at the events of the past five days. have been of such tremendous importance that I must set them down while every last detail is still fresh in my mind. 
I had no time to make an entry in this record since that day last week. It seems a month ago now and I had my first partial success with the brain of the Capuchin monkey. At that time, however, it seemed that I was doomed to disappointment. In spite of all my efforts, the brain of the monkey ceased to live at 12.14 that night. Tired and disheartened, I lay down to sleep on the cot in my laboratory. But at that very moment, fate was contriving an occurrence which now seems destined to have the most profound effect not only upon my own existence, but perhaps upon that of all mankind. Huh? Hello? Hi, what is it? Dad. Oh, David. Come in, come in. What's the matter? It's Dr. Schwartz. There's been an accident or something. Oh. He's pretty upset. All right, I'll come. Oh, Patrick. Oh, Patrick. Patrick. Thank heavens, my boy. What's the matter, Omar? There's, there's been a plane crash on the mountain. Only one of them was left alive, and I, I brought in this far, but he, he needs an immediate operation. Oh, that's your job, your counter physician. Oh. Patrick, it's... It's multiple fractures of both legs. Three no, arteries are severed. The legs will have to be amputated. Huh? You're not in any shape to do the job. Well, I... Well, that's not my fault. Take him to the Phoenix Hospital. I'm not going to take responsibility. Well, it's too hard. Really we we never it. get there in time. And Patrick, please, it, it may mean a man's life and... And, and I, your job as county physician. No, no, I'm not thinking of that. But it's it's an important man. William H. Donovan. Donovan? Don... The Wall Street Donovan? Yes. yes. You've got to help me, Patrick. Donovan. Huh. Well, his chances. Oh, yeah, about even, if we hurry. Well, bring him in. Oh, thank you, Patrick. Thank you. You better get some things on, David. You may have to help. Yes, uh, and we use the laboratory table. Before you go, put the instruments to sterilize it. And don't forget the Geely saw. Right. Oh, but... But, uh, but what? I thought the Geely saw was only used for... For, for brain surgery. Uh, hmm. Not always. Hurry. They'll bring him in out of the car. Okay, in here. In here. That's right. Easy, do Around the table, please. Yes, doctor. Easy, easy. Uh, you better get yourself a gown and gloves, Dr. Right over there. You won't have time to scrub. Yes, thank mm-hmm. you, Dr. Bad, isn't it? Pulse rapid. Heart very faint. I wasn't sure. Well, well, David, uh, yes, Pass Patrick. CC of adrenaline, David, 1 to 1,000 to Venus. Right. You men can go now. Is there anything else? Well, no, thank you. Patrick, I don't you I'd think... I'd rather we were alone, if you don't mind, gentlemen. Yes. Good night, then, Dr. Schrath. Dr. Good, Good night. night. Now, David, David, if you remove the blanket from his legs, that's it. All right. Let me see. Fortunately, a forest ranger got to him right after the crash had sense enough to put a tourniquet on each leg, even so. Sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure, sure. We'll get it. Sure, sure, sure. What are you saying? Uh, something like, sure, sure, sure. He said it over and over. Huh. I hadn't realized he was deformed. It doesn't show as much in his pictures. Patrick, don't you think we ought to begin? Ah, oh, there's no use amputating those legs. No use? He'll be dead anyway by morning. I won't eat. Uh, suppose you're right, Patrick. You know I'm right. But still, we ought to try. We can't refuse to operate. Just we are because... going to operate. Syringe, please, David. The large one. Here you are, Dad. Spinal anesthetic. You give it, Dr. Schrott. Right. Scalpel. Please, David. Scalpel and the Geely saw. Geely saw? Patrick. Well? No, 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 Patrick. I won't let you. After your performance tonight? Well, I... But, Patrick, he's still alive. Precisely. My mistake with the monkey was that he was dead. I don't intend to make that mistake again. Come on, David. The scalpel. Are you out of your mind? You're, you're, You're taking a man's life. I'm giving him life. Donovan would die anyway. But for a while, at least, Donovan's brain will live. For the body pretty soon. Yeah, you can go now, David. I, David, I think I will uh, then. You understand, of course. Yes, I understand. Not a word, not a word to your mother or to anyone. I understand. <laughs> Did you put something in the skull cavity? Oh, yeah. The eyes won't fall. No, I still have a cotton bandage, the whole cranium. It would look like any head injury. I hope nobody gets any ideas about an autopsy. You're the coroner. You can stop there. Look, Schwartz. This is a chance that comes once in a lifetime. William Donovan had one of the greatest minds, has one of the greatest brains in the world today. And now you have it. Uh, it's Turn on the encephalograph. Simple, simple. Now we're waiting for course. So different from the monkeys. You can't take a human brain out of its body and expect it to function. I suppose not, but... Trot! Did it ever occur to you... That the brain might simply be asleep? Sleep? Certainly. An operation like that is a severe shock. Tap on the glass. Good Lord, Patrick. Tells away. It was asleep. You woke it up. It's, it's that 
that, Julie. Can't you see? You see, the three of us. Three of us conducting this experiment now. You, and me, and William Horace Donovan. July 25th, I moved my bed into the laboratory, but I scarcely slept in six days. I no longer any doubt that the brain responds like a sensitive seismograph to vibrations hearing, including the sound of my voice. And I found no method of communication with it. I've devised a simplified Morse code consisting of taps on the glass container, together with voice vibrations. Perhaps, perhaps I can teach the brain. July 30th, Strauss has come to stay with me, half out of a feeling that he shares with me a common guilt, half out of scientific curiosity. I've scarcely seen him, and both David and Janice have been avoiding me, not that I really care. He's been tapping out my code on the side of the brain's container endlessly, day and night, over and over, a thousand times, so that a baby could learn it, if the brain can learn. I sleep only when the brain itself falls into exhausted slumber. When it wakes again, I resume my tapping. Yes, old boy. I want to show you something. Patrick, you look like a ghost. Where are we going? Back to the laboratory. I can't believe it myself. I, I may be dreaming delirium. What's happened? Come on. You hear that? Still the way? Yes, sir. You've got to check my observations for me. If my reason you can't tell me, I can't be sure of anything anymore. Yes, now listen carefully. You know that I've been trying to communicate with the brain in code now. If I were able to cause a distinctive pattern of the brain felt away by a specific command in code, if the brain responded with the same pattern of sound each time I issued a command, it would prove that I succeeded in communicating with the brain, wouldn't it? Yes, my brain, I think it would. Now, listen. of the word talk. Three times. Talk. 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 It answered. It spoke. Then I'm right. It's true. This thing has learned to talk. To talk. Romanticizing, of course, the Delta pattern is so infinitely complex that it's utterly impossible ever to break it down into specific words, yet that it understands me, that it's trying to communicate with me, is certain. Shot suggests mental telepathy that I try to make my mind a blank, as the mediums call it, while at the same time increasing the energy content of the plasma that feeds the brain, and the hope of stepping up the brain's electrical potential is one step of the power of the radio station. Naturally, telepathy is nonsense, but... The feeding theory intrigues me. I shall try it. August 12th. Now, this today for the first time, two distinct nodules of new brain cells on the frontal lobe. The electrical potential has increased to 510 microvolts. I, I, I've become smoking cigars. I, although I've always hated cigars before... As I expect. August 22nd, nodules still growing. Electrical potential 1450. There's no observable results. Late, they felt a compelling urge to know more of Donovan's life and have collected every available scrap of information about him. A strange man he was. Strange, ruthless. Actually, evil in many ways. But nonetheless, an extraordinarily brilliant mind. <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. You will be the 
Yes. You agree? Of course. Sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. What is it? What happened? I thought I had to wake you up, Patrick. You were moaning in your sleep, talking. Uh, Talking? What did I say? I'm not sure, but your voice was so strange that... Dennis, Dennis, what's the matter? Nothing, nothing. I was dreaming, that's all. Janice woke me up. Patrick, let me see your hand. hand? No, the other one. What about it? You're not left-handed, are you? No. Then why have you got ink on the fingers of your left hand? What? I don't know. Were you writing anything tonight? No. You must have been, Patrick. Here it is, right here on your desk. Nonsense. Wait, let me see it. Oh, you've been writing his name. William H. William Donovan. H. Donovan Schrott. That's not my handwriting. It's... What? Don't you see what it means? The brain has communicated with me. Patrick, you go. Look here. Look at this magazine article. Here's a reproduction of his signature. And he was left-handed, too. It says so here. Why, it is. It, it oh, is exactly the what same. What a fool I've been. Look at this picture smoking a cigar. With his left hand, I wondered why I suddenly started smoking cigars. The same brand, too. Janice. Try to remember what you heard me saying just before you woke me up. Come on, Janice. Think. Patrick, I, I can't believe. Think, Janice. All I heard was something like, sure, sure, sure. Oh, sure, sure. Of course. Don't you remember, Shrot? He said it that night was the only thing he ever heard him say. It, it, it was an expression of his. It, Tell us about that one of the articles. Two it, years. It, it, it wasn't time. your voice. In my voice, you see, the brain has grown. And it's strong enough to influence not only the higher functions of the frontal lobe, but the speech centers, the motor centers of another brain. Patrick, if this is true, then your experiment has been successful. It ended. Ended? Oh, it's only begun. Patrick. Don't you see what this means? Patrick, listen to me. Oh, what, Janice? What? You've got to stop. Stop? I can't stand it any longer. Can't you see where it's led you? When you cut yourself off from your family, when you neglected your health, began having fits of temper, and were like... like someone I hardly recognize as the man I married. All that I tried to understand. But don't you see what you've done? You are a murderer, Patrick, a murderer! Janice, darling! You told me the whole thing. This poor boy's half insane himself from worry. Insane? What do you mean by that? What I say. You killed Donovan. Maybe he wouldn't have been anyway. But you killed him. And now this, this thing has gained such power over your mind that it can make you do things you don't even know about. For all you know, it could make you do anything. Anything. You've got to choose, Patrick. Oh, Janice, please. I suppose you're right, but I'm utterly exhausted. I can't even think anymore. You've got to think. Give me until tomorrow. Let me sleep. And tomorrow I'll do something. I promise you. All right, Patrick. Tomorrow. But if you don't do something, if you don't destroy that thing, I will. The brain. It's almost as though it heard you and were raging. Raging at you. This way, please, Doctor. Come on, darling. But, Patrick, why are we going in here? A psychiatric clinic? I told you I'd do something, Janice. I've, I've got an idea. You I... mean you're you're having yourself psychoanalyzed? Well... Something like that? Something like that. I'll, I'll tell you about it later. First, I want, I want you to talk to this man alone. Dr. Banger, this is Dr. Corey. Oh, how do you do, Dr. Corey? How do you do, Dr. So Dr. Banger? Your work. Oh, yes. And this is Mrs. Corey. Of course, excuse me. I'm happy to meet you, Mrs. Corey. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, won't you come in tomorrow? Uh, I will certainly. Janice, would you mind I'm waiting in the reception room? I'll be out just a moment. Thank you. Why, certainly, dear. In here, please, Doctor. Very well. Well, Doctor, she seems quite normal. I'd expect it from what you told me on the telephone. Dear. I... I know, I... No, I, I... I can assure you, I, I... I hate to tell you this, but... Uh, doctor... She's quite insane. I see. Yes. Uh, uh, paranoia. She, she's always been, you know, jealous of my work. And... Well, last... A little while she started. She's got a, a, a delusion that 
She thinks I made some kind of a monster in, up in, in my laboratory. It controls my mind and then controls my actions. Huh. So uh, I'm, I'm putting her completely in your hands. Oh, well, it's of course a little unusual, but since you are yourself a medical man... That's right. Uh, you definitely wish to commit her then, huh? Yes. Yes. You have the papers. Oh, yes. Here you are. Uh, just your signature will be enough, though. Uh, there you are. Uh, you, you let me know about everything, won't oh, you? Oh, naturally, Doctor. We keep okay. informed. Thank you. Well, goodbye then, Dr. Corey. We, we'll do what we can. Oh, all right. Uh, Patrick? Uh, Mrs. Corey is staying with us, Miss Wilcox. Yes, Dr. Zanny. Patrick? Come back! Patrick! Oh, it's all right, Mrs. Corey. Just come with me, please. Patrick! Yes. No. Where are you going? Let me go! Let me go! Yes? Oh, about the bill. How do you wish it to be handled? Uh, the bill? The... The bill? <sighs> sure, sure, sure. I, I'll take care of it by the week. The checks will be signed to uh, William H. Donovan. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> August 20th. It's nearly three weeks now since Janice went away. I can't understand how she could have left me just when I needed her most. When I try to question Shroud or David about it, they only look at me strangely and change the subject. Clearly, they too now are in on the conspiracy. Sometimes it seems the only person I can trust is Donovan. The brain communicates with me more freely now each day. I know it has some great plan in mind for me, for both of us. I'm waiting. Patiently waiting. Listening, Donovan. Don't be angry, Donovan. I'm trying to understand. I, I'm listening, Donovan. I'm listening. I, I, I'm. Uh, uh, So closes Donovan's Brain, part one, the first of two half-hour presentations of Kurtz Yodmak's story, presenting Orson Welles as star of Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the performance of Orson Welles and that of the whole cast tonight in our Roma Suspense play. The Roma Wine Company would like to express its thanks for the many letters of appreciation from listeners which we are constantly receiving, saying how much you enjoy these broadcasts. And here's a thought. To discover the enjoyment these suspense programs offer, you first had to sample one. And so you must first sample one of the many delicious Roma wines to discover for yourself their wonderful taste and quality, the excellence that makes Roma America's largest selling wines. You'll discover, as of other millions before you, that Roma wines are super quality, are super tasty, and are super easy on your pocketbook, too, costing only pennies a glass. Be sure you get R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. The greatest and most profitable investment you can make in your country's future is to buy war bonds. Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS... 
the Columbia Broadcasting System. Roma Wines presents Suspense. Roma Wines. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud. Your health, senor. Roma Wines host the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the man in black. Here to introduce this weekly half hour of suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, we again bring you Mr. Orson Welles. In the second of two consecutive performances starring Mr. Wells as the protagonist of Kurt Schuttmatt's novel, Donovan's Brain. The producer of Suspense and its sponsors, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, felt this story so unusual that it merited more than our usual time. So in somewhat of a departure from established radio formulas, we are bringing you the story of Donovan's Brain in two parts. And tonight you will hear part two, the completion of... Donovan's Brain. But before we raise the curtain on our suspense play, let's for a moment wish ourselves away to Havana, Cuba. Seated at the table in the fashionable Hotel de Nacional de Cuba. Near us, a, gr- a group of Cubans are entertaining an American visitor. Our American has just remarked that in point of great enjoyment, the Cuban rumba is one of America's most delightful imported dances. And then, raising his wine glass, the Cuban host responds... Then we have perhaps discarded some part of our debt to you Americans for this wonderful tasting wine that gives us such great enjoyment. It is wine that Cuba imports from your faraway California. It is Roma wine. Americans didn't have to wait for wine connoisseurs of other lands to discover the greatness of California's wine district, the superb quality of Roma California wine. So many millions made this discovery for themselves that Roma wines have long been America's largest selling wines. But these millions discovered something more. In Roma wines, they discovered an easy and expensive way to increase the delights of daily living. Yes, millions have discovered that Roma wines, as a beverage on the table, and when used in entertaining, add a charm of a special and wholesome kind. I told you Roma wines cost little. That's because here in America, you pay no high import duty, no expensive shipping charges. Two, Roma wines come from Roma's own wineries in the heart of choice California vineyard district. So, cost to you is only pennies a glass for R-O-M-A Roma wine. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now with part two of Donovan's Brain... And with the performance of Orson Welles as Dr. Patrick Corey, we again hope to keep you in suspense. As I sit now outside my laboratory door writing, under the heading Experiment 87, this final entry in my casebook, I know that these are the last words I shall ever write upon this earth. For those who seek some explanation, I refer them simply to this case book. Let them read it carefully. Perhaps then and then in some measure understand, if not condone, the awful circumstances under which I have been driven to the most appalling crime against God and nature that it has ever been the fate of mortal man to perpetrate. August. 24th. It's now six weeks, exactly 42 days, since I began the experiment. For six weeks, by artificial means alone, I have kept alive a human brain, completely detached from the body, floating in a bath of serum nourished by a synthetic blood plasma fed through its arteries by an electric pump. It has remained alive, not only alive, but I have succeeded in communicating with it. I have even induced new growth of brain cells and so tremendously increased its mental faculties that by sheer brain power alone has actually been able to communicate its thoughts to me. And each day, my communion with that living, pulsing mass of gray matter that was the brain of William Donovan becomes stronger and stronger. Even now, I sense it's striving to reveal some plan to me, something so truly world-shaking in its implications. But only such an organism, developed to a point thousands of years ahead of its time, could ever have conceived it. 
So far I sense this only, but soon I shall know. Indeed, I shall be partner in its execution. What a fool I was ever to have considered for a moment my wife's demand that I end the experiment. It's because I refused, of course, that Janice left me a week ago without so much as a word of explanation or farewell. Even my son David and my assistant Sharp are privy to this conspiracy to thwart me. For when I ask about Janice, they pretend to know nothing of They seek to avoid my questions. But the brain will live. Yes. I can hear it now. This delta wave quite audible over the amplifying system I've arranged for it. Almost as though it were calling to me. Trying to speak to me. The brain will live. Donovan? What is it? What are you trying to tell me? Go on, Donovan. I'm listening. Go on. Go on. Who is it? What do you want? I'm not trying to talk. I'm busy. I'm sorry. Go away. I tell you, I'm busy. Please, can't you two leave me alone? All right, all right. What is it? What is it? Patrick, won't you come into the study with us for a few minutes? What have you got to say to your idea? You know I can't leave the laboratory. Dad, it's only that well, we wanted to talk to you in, in private. You don't tell me that you're afraid of this poor Martha's brain cells yet? It's not that bad, but we never mind it. <laughs> At least turn that thing off then, will you, Patrick? <laughs> what difference would it make? It's still here, couldn't it? Well, what is it then? Well, it's, it's about Mother. So... She put you up to this, did she? I thought the truth would come out sometime. Dad, listen, she's trying to stop this experiment from the beginning. She thought she could blackmail me into quitting by leaving me, and she still does. Now, she's using you as a go between. That's true. Listen, listen a minute, I've won't you? We haven't heard a word from Janice. We don't even know where she is. That's what we've come to talk to you about. Oh, oh, have you? Well, how could I know where she is? Oh, because you were the last person seen with her, Dad. I was. Don't you remember, Patrick? You took her into town with you. You, you wouldn't tell any of us why. Yes, of course. I'm all I've forgotten the why it. Well, don't you remember what happened then? Of course I remember. She left me, that's all. Well, where is that? Where did she leave well, What were you doing? I don't know. We were in some big public building, city hall, courthouse, taxi, or something. The thing I knew, she'd simply disappeared. I, is that all? Did yes. she say anything? Didn't she at least tell you why she was going? Well, I remember what she said. It's been a week or more. If I'd have slept, you know, I've been working night and day. Yes, that's just it. What do you mean by that? Patrick, you say this. The, the brain communicates well, with you. Tell you yes. things about his past life. Suggest thought. Yes, Well, yes. if the brain can make you think of things, might it also be able to make you forget things? Yeah. Get out of your mind. Dad, are you sure? Are you sure you don't know what's happened to Mother? No, I tell you, no, I but don't Patrick, know. Don't you see what you might have done? What? Not now, while there's still time. Get out of here. While there's still time to help Janice, if there is. While there's still time to help yourself. Shut off the current. Get Let out. the die. Kill it, Patrick. Kill it. Get out, both of you. Get out. Get out. <laughs> Twenty six. The brain continues to communicate thought fragments more and more easily, but nothing further on what I've come to think of. I'm now sleeping a great deal, but my dreams are becoming increasingly troublesome, although I'm the loss to analyze them. Most frequent is a sort of vast cosmic valley presided over by the colossal figure of a young man whom the population of the earth were moving past him in review. That is command. Charlie's fainted. No, no, David, don't let him. Yeah. right now. Here's a glass of water. The man, you're trembling all over. I, you look I can't that way for you. Look, look I'm frightened after death. Dad, you... What happened here? Anyway, I came and found you on the floor. Your hands are on your own throat. Tell them to me. Why is your luggage all packed? I was going to leave. Leave? In the middle of the night? Why? Because I... Who's Marcy? You know, but it was you, Shrops. 
You're going to shut off the current. You are going to kill the brain. Patrick, you tried to strangle me. What? It's true, Dad. That's why I had to slap you. That's absurd. I came in here and found Shrott with his hands around his own throat. He was strangling himself. Dad, please, think a minute. Nobody can strangle himself. Look at these marks on my throat. Do you think I could have done that? It's not possible, and yet... It's true, Patrick, that I tried to shut off the current. I was afraid for you. But as I opened the fuse box, I heard the delta waves in the laboratory suddenly become stronger and louder than they'd ever been before. And then... Then... Then I... Yes. And the brain mill? Yeah, you even spoke in Donovan's voice, Donovan's Patrick. voice, his That voice. recurring phrase of his. Sure, sure, sure. And his very tones, his very accent. Yeah, sure. You've created a monster, Patrick. It has the power to make me commit murder. The brain... The brain must die. Pull the switch in the fuse box, Patrick. It will only be a matter of seconds. Yes, and then... Yes, I... I... But I... But I... I... You've got to, Patrick. Shrap, David. Help me, I can't move. Come yes. in. Pull the switch, honey. Shrap, David, go on. You? You too? It's paralyzed, Miss Patrick. Huh? The brain won't let itself be killed. Then, then it has the power to live on. And on. To command us. As long as we live. Make us do anything at once. Kill. Bad. What are we going to do? This is... Uh, it's September seventh. Shot has left. He had to, of course, for his own protection, if nothing else. Before he left, he swore to eternal secrecy. He was going to try to find Janice. The very thought that any harm might come to her through me is enough to drive me almost mad. As for David, although he's strong enough to prevent any untoward accidents, I don't know. He's, he's volunteered to stay with me. I can sleep at night behind locked doors. We must devote every faculty we possess together and independently to finding a way of destroying the brain. Perhaps while it sleeps, it seems to have developed tremendous powers of the subconscious which operate even in sleep. The recurring dream, the now oppressive sense of some further task to be performed continues. If Janice were only here, even her presence, I know, would help immeasurably to combat this fearful thing. Terrible thought crosses my mind. Could Shrat have left if the brain had not, for some reasons of its own, actually wanted him to leave? September 10th. My thoughts are less and less my own. The dream of the young giant bestriding the earth, the figure without a face, pursues me now, even in my waking hours. Increasingly, I seem to live in a world of evil fantasy, peopled and controlled by the mind of William Donovan. I'm well enough, but Janice, where have you been? Where have I been? Janice, you have no idea. I don't know how crazy we're in about you. Did Shrot find it by June? Yes. Shrot found me. Janice, why did you leave me that day? Why didn't you at least tell me? Where did you go, darling? I was with friends. Did Shrot tell you anything? No. 
Nothing special. Well, Jared, I know I haven't been a very good husband these last months. I haven't been very kind or very considerate or even civilized. I, I haven't been myself, Janet. I know, Patrick. My poor dog. If you'd only known how I missed you after you left, how I needed you. I need your help. I Jared. know, Patrick. I, I came back to help you. But, but what? Well, Baby. He's asleep in the next room. That is, ladies tried to make the point to sleep only when I didn't. Trying to keep an eye on things. Patrick, I'm going to help you. Mm. All I can, any way I can. But first, I mm. want to take David away. David? Why? Because I don't think it's good for him to be here. No? I don't think that you... Patrick, I didn't want to torment you. It's only that perhaps we can find a way if we know all the facts. What, Jen, is it? Don't you know, really, where I was? No, how could I? Don't you remember where you took me? Where? I took you? I don't know. You took me to a psychiatric clinic. <laughs> you had me committed to a madhouse. Now, Janice. No, that... Not you, Donovan. Donovan. It was because I tried to make you stop the experiment. Yes. Kill the brain. As you left me there, you even spoke in Donovan's voice. Sure, 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 you said. Oh, sure. I thought there was a last word to Ever hear you speak. Oh, Janice, forgive me. Forgive me, then. I couldn't persuade anyone. I was sane. Oh, sweet. After what you told him... Everything I said only made him think I was mad. I'm not mad. Am I, Patrick? I'm not mad. Am I? for some three hours. I've sent her into town for Dr. Zanger, the psychiatrist. Maybe he can help, but now, suddenly, I'm... I, I, I'm... I'm overcome with the thought of the humiliation I shall have to suffer when other other medical men become aware of the position I'm in and the end of my career and my reputation all my hopes. It's folly to think that Zanger would keep it to himself, indeed. I, he'd have no right to. I... I I can bear it if I must, but another way, a possibility, occurs to me, and I've, I've been thinking it over. There's no harm in trying it in any event. I, I must try. I, I have three hours. David? David? Yes, sir? Da- David, what's your blood type? Do you know your blood type? Matter of fact, I... Oh, I, don't, I don't think I do. Why? Uh, no matter. We can easily find out. David, I, I think it's the last I know a way. To kill the brain? It's simple. It's perfectly natural. Yet nine chances out of ten is something Donovan had never had known about. I, I'll do it myself. Unfortunately, my blood type and his are... Uh, they're the same. Uh, of course, I have to replenish the blood substance. Yeah, again, it's about time to do it again. I, I've always used my own because it was the same type as his, but if uh, yours is a different type. Yeah, the right type, David. You the wrong type? You, you, yes, you've given the wrong... The brain... The, the brain will die, given the wrong type. Yeah. I, 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 I'm sure of that. I know it. But suppose the brain yes. knows it, it knows other things. I, I, I've thought of that. It's a chance we'll have to take if you're willing, David, my boy. Of course. And uh, then we'll take the blood sample now. Come into the laboratory. We only have the right blood type. Sure. Rather the wrong type. Uh, if you have, we'll find someone who has maybe, maybe shot. Now, uh, lie down there on the table, David. We, we want a tourniquet on your arm. Yeah, that's I'll put small it on. will do it. Go ahead, I'm ready. David, don't watch me. It'll be easier if you easier if you don't. For me. That's a funny one. Coming from you. Well, the doctors are never quite as steady with members of their own family, you know. Ready? Sure. Ready. There we are. You you all right? Yeah. 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 Be through in just a second. You getting it? All right. Yes, sure. Just a second now. Dad, I I'm sleepy. You'll be over it in a minute. What's the matter? Why am I am so sleepy? You'll be all right. Sleepy. 
adesso. Su, su, su. Su, su, su. That's what man is setting his for. Take you sleep. surprised to find the instruments sterilized, already laid out, but I've worked more rapidly and skillfully than ever before in my life, I think. I made an incision just below the hairline, laying back the scalp as far as the base of the skull. I trepanned the cranium at two centimeter intervals, working back and downwards to the upper edge of the occipital bone. With the Geely saw, I cut through the connecting bone structure and removed the entire top of the cranium, placing it in saline solution to preserve it. I made a semicircular incision in the dura mater, laying it to one side, exposing the brain. As I dissected out the facial auditory and pneumogastric nerves to free the medulla oblongata, I, I, I became conscious of an insistent clamoring, something like a mounting hysteria in the distant regions of my mind. Almost as strong as the irresistible compulsion that drove me on. But my hand did not falter. With a sure stroke, I severed the spinal cord just below the first cervical nerve. this last entry with that awful guilt on my soul. Even now I cannot fully comprehend how it has been possible for any man by mortal or immortal means to be driven to such a crime. Even the divinity himself did not demand of Abraham that final sacrifice of expiation. When he with his only begotten son ascended the Mount of Olives. Hmm. Perhaps Schott is right. Perhaps there is indeed in man some spark of the divine that will elude our test tubes and our laboratories until the end of time. Perhaps that is the one thing that even Donovan did not foresee. I only know that at the instant my son died under my own hand, I was set free. At that instant... I saw and understood for the first time that monstrous plan born in the brain of William Donovan of which I was to be the instrument. It was the plan I had glimpsed but never grasped in the recurring dream. Donovan did aspire to the domination of the world. And with those tremendous mental faculties that I myself had given him, it was literally within his power to become the absolute ruler of all mankind. Only one thing was lacking, a body, a body, a young, strong body into which those ever-growing brain cells could graft and affix themselves to live on and on perhaps for centuries. He chose the body of my son and now, my son, at last too late, I am free to destroy this foul thing of my creation. I know it as surely as I know that my own life must be forfeit. And the brain also knows. I can hear the disturbed, erratic oscillations of the delta waves coming through the laboratory door. But there's no room left in me now for fear. I shall take the six steps from the desk where I'm writing this across to the laboratory door. How often I've taken them in happier times. I shall open the door, close it behind me for the last time, and write finish for the mortal life of Patrick Arthur Corey and the brain of William Horace Donovan. May others learn from the record I leave here the lessons I've learned so bitterly and profit by them. And for the things that I have done, may God have mercy on my soul.
Phoenix, Arizona, September the 15th. The bodies of Dr. Patrick Arthur Corey and his son David were found in Dr. Corey's own laboratory early today. Young Corey had apparently died on the operating table as a result of a delicate brain operation performed by his father. In the case of Dr. Corey, medical authorities gave us their opinion that he might have died of shock as a result of the unsuccessful operation on his son. A curious feature of the case was the fact that numerous pieces of tissue identified as being from a human brain were found scattered about the laboratory floor, while a larger section of brain was found in the midst of an elaborate apparatus, evidently part of a scientific experiment. Medical authorities stated, however, that they were unable to explain the nature of the apparatus and that the brain itself was in such a state of decomposition as to indicate that it had been dead and slowly decaying for at least three months. Dr. Corey had survived by his wife, Janice. She was committed to the county asylum for the insane late this afternoon. Burial of Dr. Corey will be at the Mount of Olives Cemetery. And so closes Donovan's Brain, Part 2. The completion of two half-hour presentations of Kurt Jodnak's story presenting Orson Welles, a star of... Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Did you know that these Roma Wine suspense dramas are setting a record for the millions of delighted listeners they are attracting? We want you to feel that by tuning in the suspense program every week, you can count on real radio enjoyment. Well, in even more dramatic style, the popularity of Roma Wines is also record-breaking. Because Roma Wines are by far America's largest selling wines. Millions make sure of great wine enjoyment simply by asking for Roma wine. Here's something else these millions have discovered. You don't need fancy glassware or a special occasion to enjoy these zestful, taste-delighting Roma California wines. Roma wines possess lip-smacking flavor and zest because they come from Roma Wines' own wineries right in the heart of the magnificent California wine grape districts. And you can enjoy them as a daily delight because the cost is only pennies a glass. As for R-O-M-A, Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is Orson Welles. Next week, Mr. William Spear tells me, and he'd like me to pass the information on to you, that suspense will bring two exceptionally fine artists, Miss Ida Lupino and Mr. Vincent Price, in a play by one of radio's outstanding authors, Lucille Fletcher. I want to hear that, and I know you will too. Money invested in war bonds now helps ensure a healthy, prosperous, post-war America. The kind of America we will want for our children, as well as ourselves. Don't forget, then, next Thursday you will hear Ida Lupino and Vincent Price in... Suspense! Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. That's the show for tonight. I want to thank you all for listening. And remember, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash terror1970. Or you can find me on Instagram at Radio Show Nerd. I also have a YouTube channel, Terror Radio. Please check it out. Subscribe. Like and share the videos. Will be highly appreciated. Again, this is your host. Keith, better known as the Radio Show Nerd, signing off. <laughs>